In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a, an online order form for your clients to request a delivery. Um, we're going to use a product called JotForm because it's a pretty neat flexible product for creating forms and lets you to easily uh, host it online. Um, so first thing we're going to do is come over to JotForm here and create an account. Sign up. Okay, we've got an account. Now, um, I tried to do this demo a second ago and ran into a problem, so uh, just make sure that you don't have a brand new version of JotForm's form builder set up. Come and click on your username that you've just created. Click on settings, and um, there's a new feature here that we just want to make sure is not checked. This enable new job new form layout, so in my, this account it is, so we want to untick that. Um, if you forget to do that step, then uh, you'll see a slight error when you do the next step here so make sure you untick that. Uh, next thing we're going to do is click create form and import a form. And we're going to import from a web page. Come back to this article here that, that uh, is on the spatula blog. If, you, uh, if you're not going through the steps on this article then um, you should be able to see uh, this link in the comments below. So copy that URL in. This is the import that's not going to quite work if you have that new um, new feature enabled. Um, so that's what's gone wrong if you are experiencing problems. So we get this nice form that we've already made for you earlier. This, this form is going to be um, perfectly suited if you've got a client who's got a single delivery point, a single pickup point for their deliveries. So you can see here we've got some hidden fields relating to the pickup location that they don't want to have to type in every time and it's going to be uh, deliveries that are going to be dropped off uh, wherever the client wants and they're going to be on demand so a bit of prep time so something like a restaurant delivery service is going to be perfect for this uh, but this form you can you can take as the starting point for lots of delivery services so um, yeah ask any questions if you want to see how to convert it into something different um, next step so uh, check it, change the title and logo and title if you want. So over here on the right, there's a little um, style button. Click that, and you can you can change a whole bunch of things. Uh, you can also, um, if you click on the logo up here, the spatula logo, you can remove that and replace it with whatever your own brand is, and change the wording of uh, some of these, the the subtitle, font, etc. Then what we're going to do is um, so we've changed the logo change the logo and title and you've had to play around with the style of the rest of the form not really much that can go wrong there next we're going to set the pickup details so if you see up here we've got these four fields and they're all hidden for a good reason um, so this is just going to be the the label of the pickup so if you're going to do pickups from a restaurant you would uh, set the default uh, name as the name of the restaurant or whatever it is that this pickup point um, is going to be that the driver needs to know in order to know where they're going. So just go to properties and under advanced you'll see the default value. At the moment it's Andrew's Burgers, so change that to whatever you want. Um, the, the next is going to be the address. So we're going to do the same, th same thing. This is a label, it's not going to be used for the specific location. So use an address, a human readable address that's going to make sense to your drivers. And again come to advanced here and put in the default value as the name of the street. So we're setting these default values and then we're hiding these elements in the form. You can see this is hidden on uh, so that that pickup address is always going to be sent through to Spatula as a task um, and without them typing it each time. So and don't worry if you don't want to show a pickup task, if you only want to show a drop-off task, it doesn't matter that they're in there, you can still use this form. Uh, the only time you'd need to change it a bit is if you wanted to have point-to-point -point delivery services where um, the client might be putting in a different pickup point each time. Okay, so the last two are going to be the latitude and the longitude, and we're going to set those up the same way by putting in the lat and long as default. Um, if you're not sure where to get the latitude and longitude of your particular client site, um, the easiest way to do it is to open a new tab, go to the Maps app, um, the, the Google Maps, and then type the address in that you want to find. So let's do somewhere where I know they won't mind me using their address, my house, um, and right click on the pin that comes up and click the what's here and this is the Latin long right there so you'd be able to copy and paste um, all of that and, uh, and, and put it into the form uh, so the Latin long right there uh, so that's it, Th these fields are going to be hidden 
so that's the pickup details. Next is the phone number validation. So what we want is to automatically send through a phone number. Here we go. To, to send through the phone number that is input by the customer to spatula and have that number be automatically in the right format so that we're going to be able to SMS the customer when the driver's on the way so they'll be able to have live driver tracking. Now the problem is if you leave this as a blank text field uh, it'll never be in the right format or you won't be sure exactly how many numbers or how the customer's chosen to put it in. So what you need to do is come to properties uh, under options there's an input mask and it's got the exact format of the number that you want. So this, this format that we've got as the default is going to be perfect if you are in the USA. If you wanted to be in Australia uh, then you might do something like that. And now the, um, and we, I mean, you can put the dashes in there, however you want it to actually look. As long as you've got the numbers in a format that you know exactly what it's going to look like when it comes through. That way we're going to be able to, in the spatula um, input step, know exactly what we're going to be dealing with in terms of the format of the phone number to be able to send it through in the right format to spatula. Hope that makes sense. Please hit me up with questions if it doesn't. Next step. So get a Google API key. Uh, first I'll show you why we need that. This step here, the delivery address, is actually a um, an autocomplete step. So the customer is going to go to this enter your address here, start typing their address, and much in the same way as Google does here, you know, we started to type this in and we get all these all these suggestions. Uh, that enables us to make sure that the, the actual address that gets submitted is a real address that Google's going to be able to find. But the way to set this up is to go to the widget settings and down the bottom here you'll see it requires a Google Maps API key. So you're going to need to go to the link that I've provided here. In fact, I'm pretty sure they have the same link here in uh, JotForm. And go here and uh, create a new project for the API key. Now, this sounds scary, but it's not. You just click this blue button that says get a key and it's going to say select or create a project. You click that drop down list. I've got a few. You're going to cr click create a new project, call it my project and grab the key that it creates you in a second. Here it is. So click copy this, um, come back across to our form, click paste, update the widget and now that's going to be a thing. So if I, if I preview the form now you'll see, firstly you'll see that all those um, fields that were hidden fields will be gone but also if we come and start typing an address in here you can see all of these suggestions coming up and then when I click on one it populates the rest of the form so it makes it nice and easy for your customers to type it in and the last thing to do before we finish this is decide what you want to happen after the, uh, the form gets submitted by your customer so if this is something that you're giving to um, you know, a receptionist or somewhere where they're going to be booking a lot of deliveries, then under settings at the top here and on the thank you page, you might like to uh, have this link go back to wherever it is that you're hosting the page. This is actually a step you probably want to do at the end just before you hand over the form to your customer and make sure that they've got an easy way of getting back to the form. Um, but it's something you definitely need to think about. So at the moment what's going to happen is they're going to complete the form and submit it and uh, that's going to bring them to this thank you page and then you want them to probably be able to click this back to form button and have it go straight back to the other page. If it, Just as an example, if I click this uh, publish here, this is, this is the URL that this form is going to live at. Uh, so you would be able to embed this form um, in your own website or you can just give them that link click copy link um, and go to the settings thank you and add a link let's paste that in click OK so now this this link here is going to go to back to the form um, and I'll show you what that means in just a second so now we've got this so so now with that new phone number set up, we've got to put in a valid Australian phone number format. Customer name is going to be me. Delivery address can be back in the same place. And then uh, the delivery instructions, we don't need anything. No instructions. Um, cash to collect zero, zero, zero. 
and uh, these are some things you might want to set up defaults for or you can hide these fields if they're not things that you need and click submit it's going to go to the thank you page and then if you click back to form it's going to go straight back to the page again so that's it hope that all makes sense that is going to be the end of this part one in in this series if you've got any questions make a comment below otherwise we'll see you in the next video